This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and this is the Google Pixel Watch 2, which looks much like the Pixel Watch 1, which for a change is not a bad thing, because I mean, I don't think anyone can doubt that this is one of the most attractive smartwatches on the market, that kind of smooth pebble look, all that sort of thing. Nice. What won't be so nice for some of you is the fact that there's still just one size, 41 millimeters. So, I mean, it's fine for me. I don't have big wrists and all that sort of thing. But for some of you big bone fellas out there who it, the watch just gets lost on your wrist, that will still be a thing. Now, this time around, instead of stainless steel, which I really liked, I mean, stainless steel is a little premium, a little classy, right? You pay more for it with an Apple Watch or a Samsung Galaxy Watch, don't you? Well, now it's recycled aluminum. So it's lighter as an upside there. The watch is 350 bucks for the Bluetooth Wi-Fi model, and if you want LTE 4G, that's another $50, so $399, call it $400. Uh, so about similar pricing to the last time around. What else has stayed the same? You have the same band interconnect system on board, which is nice. It's less fiddly than using little pins on, you know, conventional watch bands, but still is a little bit more fiddly than Apple watch bands. And uh, Google's watch bands are just about as pricey as Apple's ones. So you're not going to actually get away cheap if you want more bands for your watch. The watch is still IP68 and five atmospheres rated, so you can go swimming with it. It has always on display as an option and lift to weight. The good news is, and this is what's new here, one of the new things is battery life is improved, so you're not gonna be so terrified to leave on the always on display if you wish to have that, which is, I like it, you know, other people do too, I bet. And also there's a new CPU on board, in part we can thank that one for the better battery life, the Snapdragon W5 Gen 1 processor. Now, after software updates and stuff with the original Google Pixel Watch, I didn't find it slow anymore, honestly, and it, I enjoyed it. It's one of my favorite smartwatches on the Android side of things, and this one is even a little bit snappier. That said, there are times when I still see a little bizarre lag, like after unlocking it and stuff like that, which if you're comparing it, say, for those of you who are jumping ship from Apple, land and Apple watches, it's not going to feel quite as responsive as that, but I, I find it actually a little bit more responsive than the competing Samsung Galaxy watch. Also, we now have Wear OS 4. Now, I'll be coming to the Pixel Watch OG version as well, but what, what's so nice about that, and it's not that the user interface has changed all that much. There's optimizations and all that sort of thing, but it now means that you can back up your watch and switch it to a new phone without having to wipe it and start from scratch. Hallelujah! And something else has changed is the charging puck that comes with the watch. It's not backward compatible with the last one. Now there's four little tiny pogo pins on it. Annoying and also annoying is the fact that the wire that comes out of the puck has to face in the same direction as the crown of the watch. You can't put it on any old which way you want, which when you're exhausted, you're going to sleep, you're taking it off. It's one more thing you have to pay attention to. The good news is it charges a lot faster. Though You have an empty to nearly empty watch. It's going to charge all the way to full in 45 minutes to an hour. So much appreciated. One of the things about wearables used to be how slow they charge. And, you know, if you just want to top it up because you want to use the sleep tracking, which is excellent on this watch, now that's an easy enough thing to do. Speaking of sleep tracking, it's as good as ever, really. The original Pixel Watch was quite good at that. And the metrics that it comes up with look accurate to me and compared to more sophisticated sleep wearables on the market. So it's something that I would trust if you really want to check out your sleep. The bad news is, is still it's using Fitbit, which is great. And, and Fitbit has an updated UI and I love it. I'll talk about the app a little bit more, but some stuff is still paywalled behind the premium edition, which is $10 a month. Now, if you're a new user and you buy the watch, you'll get a six month trial for free. But if you've had a Fitbit subscription before, maybe you had the older Pixel Watch, you're not going to get your six months back again. So some things like the advanced sleep metrics are paywalled. Also, there's a new safety check feature. Uh, so basically, you're walking home in the dark, you're not sure. So if you don't hit the I'm safe button, it can notify people, that sort of thing. That requires the LTE watch. You, you don't have to activate the LTE, but you have to get it. And also the Fitbit premium subscription. A safety feature like that should not be behind a premium paywall. For those of you who don't want the LTE, which I, I really do find handy because sometimes you just want to go out and not bring your phone with you, especially if you have a giant phone like the Pixel 8 Pro or a big folding phone or whatever, right? Um, 
But if you don't want the LTE, you don't want the plan, which typically costs about 10 bucks a month from carriers, imagine that plus the Fitbit subscription, you're up 20 bucks a month right there that you didn't really want to spend. Mm. Anyway, if you just get the model with Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, it works just fine and it works within Wi-Fi and Bluetooth range. If you go out of range, it doesn't mean the watch doesn't work. You can still like track your exercises if you go out for a run and stuff like that. You just want kind of getting stuff from your phone anymore, like text messages and email notifications and that sort of stuff but the basics all work on here other than those things that actually require your phone, which must be an Android phone. It does not have to be a Pixel phone, but it must be an Android phone. You're not gonna lose features by using it with a different brand of phone though, which is nice. Hello, Samsung, sometimes Samsung does that. We only get some features on their watches if you use them with a Samsung phone. You have ECG, you have fall detection, you have basically whatever Apple introduces, you'll start seeing appear on all these and heart rate monitoring that is very good. The only time I notice it, ran a couple of beats per minute higher than my fitness trackers and Apple Watch Ultra was using an exercise bike, but it was like five BPM higher. Other than that, usually it's within one BPM, so it's pretty darn accurate. The GPS on this is decent enough, takes a little while to start up, but it works absolutely fine, except sometimes I noticed distance discrepancies between this and the Apple Watch Ultra and some dedicated fitness trackers where it would think that I actually went a longer distance with the watch. So fake bonus points to me when I'm wearing this one, right? Sometimes actually the software would catch up with itself and error correct. So like the next day it would say, ah, no, we caught you. We know you didn't actually go two miles. You only went 1.5. Fitbit software, I love the Fitbit software on this. It is really intuitive, it's very comprehensive. The exercise types that are supported with this are myriad. I don't think you're gonna run out of, you're not gonna be at a loss for tracking whatever it is you do. The way it presents zones for exercising, I think is very useful compared to some other products. So it tells you when you've been in your aerobic zone versus not, how intense it was, the stuff that, it, in a way that actually matters to you. So I would say that that is really well done. Again, the sleep tracking on this, excellent, but some of the more advanced features are paywalled, boo on that, but as a sleep tracker, yay. And also the modes really help with this. So it used to be if you were wearing the uh, Pixel Watch for sleep tracking, uh, you know, the battery life wasn't the best on, right? And then you wear it overnight. So now maybe 10, 15%, that's all it loses because it just goes into sleep mode anyway. So it's not using as much power. So what you have here now is a watch. Now, to be fair, the original Pixel watch after many software updates got to be a lot better with battery life. But here you have one that actually really can make it through 24 hours. And I think in 24 hours, most of us can find a half an hour or 45 minutes to charge this up to keep it going longer if you need to do that, if you're using it all the time, you know, sleep tracking and stuff. So they've done a good job. I like the user interface. I like that it feels fairly seamless, not intrusive, not like there's extra button pushes or anything like that necessary at all the wrong times. It becomes a part of my life in a very easy way that reminds me of the Apple Watch, which is well done in that respect. And I think they're really starting to give Samsung a run for their money when it comes to that. Again, the only drawbacks are gonna be, you want stainless steel, you're not gonna get it. You want a bigger watch, you're not gonna get it anymore. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more cool tech videos and thumbs up if you like this vid.